happy morning my dear children i believe that everyone are fine this is geography class 2 in the previous class we had discussed about the spheres of the earth and the layers of the earth layers of the earth i hope you revise the topic well yes good today's topic is rocks let us going to discuss about the rocks what is rocks rocks are the rocks an aggregate of minerals on the earth crust is rocks what is rock an aggregate of minerals on the earth crust is called rocks based on the formation rocks are classified into three by the geologist they are igneous rocks sedimentary rocks what are the three types of rocks igneous rocks sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks now we are going to see about these igneous rocks now let us discuss about igneous rocks igneous is a word is derived from the latin word ignis which means fire the word igneous igneous is derived from the latin word ignis which means fire now how these igneous rocks are formed we are going to see that igneous rocks are formed from magma what is magma as now you people are clear with that magma magma is magma is the lower part of the mantle always it will be in the liquid form this liquid rock from magma when it reaches the top layer of the earth it is termed as lava when this lava cools and solidifies as rock that is called igneous rocks let me repeat magma is the liquid form this when this magma reaches the top layer of the earth it was termed as lava when this lava cools and solidifies as rock that is called igneous rocks these igneous rocks are often termed as primary or mother rocks why it was termed as primary and mother rocks it means these other rocks like uh, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks are directly or indirectly formed from this igneous rocks that is the reason why this igneous rocks are termed as primary or mother rocks so kindly note this children this is the expected question uh, all the time why uh, give reason why this uh, igneous rocks are called primary and uh, mother rocks at that time you should not blink you must know these uh, this uh, igneous rocks are uh, termed as primary and mother rocks because the other rocks like sedimentary and metamorphic rocks are directly or indirectly they formed from this igneous rocks so that this igneous rocks are termed as primary or mother rocks the best example for this igneous rocks are granite and basalt now i hope so you understand about this igneous rocks now we are going to see about sedimentary rocks sedimentary rock is the second type of rock the sedimentary rocks is derived from the latin word sediment which means settled sedimentary rocks are uh, derived from the latin word sediment which is which means settle now we are going to see how the sedimentary rocks are formed the sedimentary rocks are formed so let me repeat sedimentary rocks are formed from uh, formed due to the natural agents like rain rivers and wind these natural agents carry the dust particles of soil sand and dead plants and they started to deposits one by one in the layers of the earth after a million of years ago these deposits are hardened into compact rocks these compact rocks are called sedimentary rocks okay the natural agents like rain rivers and wind they carry the dust particles and they started to deposit these uh, dust particles into the layers after a years ago these deposits are hardened into compact rocks these compact rocks are called sedimentary rocks the best example for sedimentary rocks are sandstone limestone chalk and gypsum now we are going to see 
the third type of rock that is metamorphic rocks. The term metamorphic is derived from the word metamorphosis which means change of form. The term metamorphic rocks is derived from the word metamorphosis which means change of form. Now come to this point. The rocks like sedimentary and igneous rocks when they are subjected to extreme heat and pressure they undergo a complete change and they transform their character and their formation. Now let, let me give through this example. See you know, you know that granite and basalt are the uh, example for igneous rocks. When this granite and basalt when they subjected to uh, the extreme heat and pressure they change themselves as the granite into knees and basalt into gist. The same how the sediment, the limestone and sandstone are the best example for the sedimentary rocks. When they undergo uh, extreme heat and pressure, they change their formation, this limestone into marble and the sandstone into quartzite. What is already you people are familiar with this quartzite. Quartzite is nothing but it's a decorative stone. It is used to cover the wall. When this quartzite are crushed, it is used to uh, build a, a road. Okay, you know what is metamorphosis? Metamorphosis means change of form. When the other rocks are subjected to extreme heat and pressure, these uh, uh, rocks are undergo a complete change in their form and character that is called metamorphic rocks. Now we are going to see about rock cycle. Rock cycle is a continuous process in which igneous rocks sedimentary rocks. Okay. Now we are going to see about the rock cycle. Rock cycle is the continuous process in which igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks are transformed from one form to another. Let me repeat. Rock cycle is the continuous process in which Igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks are transformed from one form to another. See, let me repeat it in a, a simple term. Igneous rocks are formed from magma. When this magma reaches the top layer of the earth, it, it, it termed as lava. When the lava cools and solidified as rocks, it is called uh, igneous rocks. When these igneous rocks are proceed with the natural agents like that means uh, natural agents like a uh, 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 rain, a uh, wind, and water, they transport all the dust particles and they used to deposit in the top layer of the earth. After a year, these deposits are can, uh, changed into sedimentary rocks. When these sedimentary rocks are undergo with this high temperature and pressure, they transform as metamorphic rocks. Then after this metamorphic rocks, it will be uh, changed as molten rock. When the molten rock comes to the top layer of the earth, it will be referred as lava. The lava uh, cools and solidified as rocks as uh, it become a igneous rock. This is the uh, procedure. This is the rock cycle. So they transformed from each other. They, can, they trans, transform this igneous sediment and metamorphic rocks are transformed from one form of another is called as rock cycle. Now we are going to discuss about the geomorphic cross. The geomorphic cross has been held in two ways. First one is internal or endogenetic process. Another one is external or exogenetic process. What is endogenetic process? The forces that act from the earth interior towards the earth surface is called endogenetic process. On the other way, the forces that act on the surface of the earth due to the natural agents is called external or exogenetic process. 
These en endogenetic process build the landscape and create topographic relief. This exogenetic process tear the landscape and create an elevative plains and shapes the landform. What are the two uh, geomorphic process? One is internal or endogenetic process. Another one is external or exogenetic process. We are going to continue with this in internal or endogenetic process. What is internal, pro internal process? Internal process generate heat and that heat it vomits or omits the material from the earth's crust. What is internal process? Internal process generate heat and it vomits the material from the earth crust is called a internal or endogenetic process. This endo internal or endogenetic process which is uh, 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 is the main source for the internal process is internal radioactivity. You must know which is the main or the primary source for the internal processes, internal radioactivity. Now we are going to see about the plate tectonics. The first layer of the earth, that lithosphere, has been divided into number of huge slabs of rocks. That huge slabs of rocks are termed as tectonic plates. See, the first layer of the earth, the lithosphere, has been further divided into number of huge slabs of rocks that is termed as tectonic plates. These tectonic plates are further divided into two, the major and minor plates. These major and minor plates are independently float over the mantle. When they collide each other, they produce high elevated ranges and irregular features both in the area of land and the ocean floor. These phenomena is termed as plate tectonics. These plate tectonic movements is happen due to the thermal energy from the mantle. So what is the term plate tectonics? See, let me repeat that. The lithosphere is divided into number of huge slabs of rocks. It is termed as tectonic plates. The tectonic plates further divided into major and minor plates. These major and minor plates float over the mantle. When they collide each other, when they touch each other, they produce lot of uh, high elevated ranges and irregular uh, features both in the ocean floor and the uh, land area. That phenomenon is termed as plate tectonics. These plate tectonic movement is happen because of the thermal energy from the mantle. Now we are going to see about the types of plate boundaries. There are three types of plate boundaries that is convergent boundary, divergent boundary and conservative boundary. What are the three types of plate boundary? Convergent boundary, divergent boundary and conservative boundary. What is convergent boundary? In the con convergent boundary areas, the plate moves towards each other. Sometimes it sinks over another. Okay, convergent boundary area, the plate move towards each other in some area, they undergo or sink undergo each other. The best example for this convergent boundary is fold mountains that is Himalayas. Himalayas is the Engfold mountain and Aravalli range is the uh, oldest old founded range that Himalayas and the Aravalli range are formed due to this convergent boundary. Next one is divergent boundary. The divergent boundary, in the divergent boundary plates moves away from each other. The divergent boundary plates move away from each other. The best example for this divergent boundary is mid-Atlantic ridges. The third type of the plate boundary is conservative boundary. In, that, uh, in this conservative boundary, plates move horizontally over each other. 
in this conservatory boundary plate moves horizontally towards each other the best example for this uh, conservatory boundary is sand and grass fault okay what are all the three types of uh, plate boundaries convergent boundary divergent boundary and conservative boundary the best example for convergent boundary is himalayas the best example for divergent boundary is mid atlantic reaches the best example for conservative boundary or san andreas fault my dear children the second day class comes to an end i hope so i have clearly explained about the types of rocks and how the rocks are formed and what is plate tectonics okay and what are all the types of uh, uh, plate tectonics everything in a clear manner i have explained uh, explained to you okay i understood you have uh, you uh, you clearly you understood well okay and today's topic worksheet i have given here kindly note that and before do this uh, worksheet kindly uh, get through the notes what you have taken and start to do this uh, worksheet okay all the best children have a nice day